When you think about The Undertaker, you think about the mystery and the mystique of the character, as well as the man behind the character, Mark Calloway. You think about his years, his decades at the top of WWE, the top of professional wrestling. You think about all the great moments and all the great matches and, and just everything that he's been and what he meant certainly to the company, what he might have meant to you personally as a wrestling fan. Uh, the streak at WrestleMania, like there's so many memories, so many moments, so many things that you attribute to The Undertaker, you attribute to the man, Mark Calloway, um, that I often think one thing that we should talk about more with Mark Calloway doesn't really get talked about very much. And I think this is part of a, a larger thing that everybody should have heroes, or at least, if anything else, role models or somebody that they aspire to or even if you want to go down the competition route you say you identify somebody that is clearly better than you and you aspire to meet them match them and ultimately surpass them but you should have people that you emulate you should have people that you pattern yourself after like that's what successful people do you don't have to figure it all out on your own and you shouldn't you should be able to learn from others, learn from the successes of others, the failures of others, the viewpoints and perspective of others. You know, it's successful people that do that and people that aren't successful that just bitch about why other people had all these benefits and advantages going for them as to why they were successful and I'm not. But beyond just that, it really talks about the importance when you think about life, you have to have goals and really dreams. It all starts with dreams. If you think about your life right now, if you don't have a dream, then are you really living? The answer is no. And if you say, well, my dream is so crazy or it's so far out there, there's no way it ever happens, then two things. One, the dream is right because the more it scares you and frightens you and worries you, the better the dream actually is to aspire to and two, when you think about dreams, who says you can't achieve that? Who says you can't make it happen? At the end of the day, the only person, and I emphasize again, the only person that's stopping you is you. Now, certainly it is easier for some to achieve their dreams than others. No question. They get the God-given genetic gifts. They get the, the gifts of being born into a family and wealth, like, you cannot say that certain people don't have other advantages compared to others. But everybody should have dreams. Because if you don't, what are you living for? What are you working towards? Like, what are you aspiring to do? What are you aspiring to be? And you think about it, it's those dreams that help you determine what you want your ultimate destination to be, that creates the vision, that helps you to map out the goals, that help you to make those steps along the way on the journey, to ultimately achieve your dreams. And you think about somebody like Mark Calloway, like we talk about him so much as a wrestler and a character and a performer in wrestling. I don't really hear a lot of talk about him as somebody that you should emulate. I don't hear a lot of talk about him being the type of guy that is a perfect example of the importance of dreams and believing in those dreams and not being afraid of pursuing those dreams and being willing to fail. And sometimes you hear somebody like The Rock talk about it. His dream was to play in the NFL. And the best thing that never happened to him was actually fulfilling that dream because it opened up a whole other world of possibilities. But he adjusted his dream. He still had a dream. And he busted his ass like hell to get there. You look at The Undertaker, you know, it's easy to get lost in the fact because this guy's been on top for three freaking decades. Like, who the hell does that when they don't actually own the territory, if you know what I mean? Like, he's been on the top legitimately for three damn decades. But it wasn't always like that for him. You know, this was a guy in Mark Calloway. He was a basketball player in college. And at one point in time, I think it was Texas Wesleyan, if I'm not mistaken. Like, he played in the mid-80s for a season there. Uh, but then he dropped out of school. And thought he was going to pursue a career in sports, potentially go and play overseas, play some basketball overseas, make money there. But then 
Ultimately, fate kind of intervened and he decided he was going to pursue something else. He had a dream. He was going to make it in professional wrestling. And how crazy is that? Now, you might say back in that time, you know, here's a kid six foot eight, you know, pushing close to probably 300 pounds. Those are the type of guys that wrestling would embrace back then. Those are the type of guys that wrestling could, could do something with. But you also had lots of guys that had that type of size or similar size profile that never made it. They never drew any money. And this is a guy being trained by Buzz Sawyer, a guy he really didn't like, that, you know, he's talked about, didn't teach him a whole lot, you know, who it took several years working in different territories, whether it was world-class championship wrestling or it was in the old Jerry Jarrett, Jerry Lawler promotion, you know, where he's sitting there coming out as the master of pain to his time in WCW, you know, and all the different, he's mean Mark Callis, he's one of the skyscrapers and skipty skip and whoop de woo Like, this is a guy that struggled. This is a guy that starved. This is a guy that had to put everything on the line to pursue his dreams. He had a goal, and he wasn't going to be discouraged when he failed. He wasn't going to be discouraged when he experienced setback. He wasn't going to be discouraged when others told him that he couldn't do anything. Like, think about it like this. The old story going back to his time in WCW when only Anderson, and I'm paraphrasing, everybody gets the basic point, says, I don't know why anybody would ever pay money to come see you. The Undertaker. The Undertaker. And only Anderson, a guy who drew money in the business for years, a guy who was a booker for a territory that made money for years, was saying this to The Undertaker, for God's sakes. This is a guy that wrestled in several territories, you know, got to a certain level, but certainly was not experiencing a successful bonanza. This is even a guy that, you know, as he was getting to the end of his time at WCW 1990, you know, he put out feelers. Heyman put out the feelers to Vince, and you know, Vince didn't want to meet him at first after they watched the after he watched the match between uh, uh, Taker and um, how was it Luger? Yeah, it was Luger at at the one WCW pay per view, and it was that match was just really really bad, and Taker was wrestling with the dislocated hip and everything. Like it was very close to we wouldn't have gotten the Undertaker in 1990 if he didn't. Stay persistent if other people didn't stay persistent because they believed in him. And once he met with Vince McMahon, you can make the argument that the rest is history. But beyond all of that, this is a guy over the years that he was watching people go to other companies and making money, you know, hand over fist compared to him. And he stayed loyal. Here's a guy that sometimes you could argue was kind of put on the back burner maybe just a little bit is what it felt like. Maybe that's not always true, but sometimes it could feel like that. Uh, but he always kept plugging along. This is a guy that, you know, especially early on in his career, like we think back to The Undertaker and the entire body of his career, and we say this is the guy that wrestled Shawn Michaels at 25 and 26. This is the guy that wrestled Edge at 24. You know, we think about this is the guy that wrestled Batista at 23, wrestled God at 17, 27, and 28, because when you're God, you get three matches with Taker at Mania, bitches. But you don't think about the stinkers and the sloppy snooze fest bad matches that he had at the early stage of his career at WrestleMania with Superfly Jimmy Snook and Jake the Snake Roberts and El Gigante, <laughs> Giant Gonzalez and King Kong Bundy and do I need to freaking go on? Like you go back and look at Taker in the early 90s, you know, oh, it's the fake Taker. There was a lot of crap that he had to deal with. He was put in a lot of crappy situations, but he still kept plugging away. He still kept coming. He never gave up on his dreams. He never gave up on his goals. He continued to work towards his goals every day. And you think about as his career went by, like the other faces changed, the names changed, the style changed, and there was one constant. It's The Undertaker. And I think, again, too often, it's almost like we shame people for saying, this is my hero, or this is my role model, or this is who I want to emulate myself after. You know, like, that doesn't mean that you think that that person is perfect. Absolutely not. I can guarantee you, Mark Calloway and I certainly do not agree on a lot of political things. But you know what? That's okay. 
You don't have to agree with everyone on every freaking thing. Like sometimes that's all right. It's a spice of life. It makes it more interesting when you don't agree on anything, everything. But I could take a look at a guy like The Undertaker and say, damn, this is a guy that was willing to put everything on the line. He was willing to give up his time and sometimes unfortunately sacrifice his family, familial relationships. This is a guy that was able to compartmentalize like right before the Boneyard match at 36, his brother dying of a heart attack and he still went out there and performed and he was the undertaker. And this is a guy, all of the damage that's been done to his body over the years. Like the reason that Taker keeps coming back to the point where many of you probably want him to go away is because he still has a dream to be the best that he could be, to be a star, to be remembered, to be known as one of the true icons. And frankly, he's got all of that, but he's found that passion. And so often it's hard to find that passion. And I look at a guy like Mark Calloway and I say, you know what? That's a guy that worked his ass off. That's a guy that believed in himself. That's a guy that had clearly created a dream for himself, a vision for himself, and clearly established goals and busted his ass every single day of his freaking working career to get to where he wanted to go. Why in the hell would I not want to look up to that? Why in the hell would I not want to sit there and say, this is somebody I want to emulate myself after, looking after him as potentially a bit of a role model? And you might say, well, that's kind of marky behavior, you know, especially when you talk about professional wrestling. You're absolutely right it is. And who gives a shit? Like, if I could sit there and bottle up the work ethic of a Mark Calloway, the relentless pursuit of perfection and winning damn near at all cost of a Michael Jordan, you know, like, you could take some of these different elements from these different people. Like, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't I want to pattern myself after that? Why wouldn't I want to sit there and learn from them? Like, to me, if anything, Undertaker is a perfect example of this world, and because he's a professional wrestler, you don't talk about it nearly enough, about the importance of perseverance and how it can pay off. The importance of never giving up on what you want to do and who you want to be. Like, maybe you were thinking that I was going to talk about something entirely different during all of these videos in this 30 Days of Taker video series. And there will be all types of different topics discussed, but, you know, again, I look at Taker... He's not perfect. He's a man. He's human. And that's okay. You know, we make mistakes and we learn from them, we grow from them, or we don't. And that in part defines who we are. But to me, he is somebody that you could look at for your own life and take positive characteristics away from him. And say, you know what? That's what happens when you have dreams and visions. That's what happens when you frame and structure your goals accordingly to help you get to that ultimate destination that you have thought out. The importance of hard work, commitment, dedication, self-belief, unselfishness. Like, not, as, not that many successful people in the world are also as incredibly unselfish as Mark Calloway is as a man. He understands that while he's important, it is not all about him. The business and the WWE were there before him. They're there now and they will be... They're after him long after he is dead. Rest in peace. I mean, I just look at him and, you know, he's a bit of an inspiration. He absolutely is. And I have no qualms about saying it. I have no shame about saying it. And I don't think any of you should either. You should look at a guy like this and say where he came from, how hard he had to bust his ass, all of the things that he's overcome, all the things that he's put himself through to reach that destination, to reach and achieve those dreams. Like the Undertaker is an inspiration. He absolutely, truly is. And there are other wrestlers that you could also similarly talk about their, their kind of hard scrabble existences or their come up stories and be incredibly motivated. The Rock, you know, had seven bucks in his pocket as he was starting his professional wrestling career. And look at him now, he's the biggest movie star in the freaking world. Have a dream. Don't ever give up on your dream. If your dream doesn't scare you, then your dream's not daring enough. Make sure you have a vision on your dream and set your goals accordingly. Emulate yourself after somebody like Mark Calloway, after The Undertaker, and say that if you believe it, you can truly achieve it. You probably didn't click, expect to click on this video and get some type of quasi half ass motivational speech. Well, that's exactly what the hell you got. I think The Undertaker is an inspiration to so many of us, 
and that's okay, and we should learn everything we possibly can from him and take it and incorporate it in our lives.